Hey, Rachel, how you doing? I've got your post up. Okay, so just the link. Okay, I was looking for a um, written um, paragraph describing you, but okay, so let's just jump right to the presentation. I've got you up right here. Let me just bring that in the screen. Okay, so there's a few things that are missing from this presentation that I would recommend that you you go ahead and, and, and edit this for Sunday's submission for your, your final submission for the week. Um, and let me go through the requirements and I'll describe what's missing. Okay, so what I want you to do is I'm, I'm over here and I'm, let me just jump over here in this page, right? Um, project page for part one. And right down here, we've got the objectives and the instructions, right? I'll go through those in a second as they pertain to your uh, presentation. But what I wanna do is jump down here to milestone. This is week five. So this is what's due. Researcher laureate provide their name bio and biography paragraphs. Okay, we need a photo and we need the dates and events for your timeline. Then we need several thumbnails. So I noticed you've got two thumbnails um, in your presentation. You've got two examples of front and back. So you're only exampling two posters, right? And, I, and this says several, I think we can interpret several um, as meaning, I would say a minimum of three, but several definitely doesn't mean two. So we need at least one more example of your sketch. And the sketches, I, I think to a high degree, it would probably, it would be, well, I'll get to that in a second. So those are the requirements as depicted in, on this page. Okay. Um, where did I go? Oh yeah, the milestones. And then right now we're going to take a look at your sketches and we're going to, we're, we're going to look at these. So I'm in the instructions area right now. So I'm going to bring this over here and I'm going to move your sketches over a little bit. And we're just going to say, all right, in our sketches. So the first um, requirement is that we include their name on the front of the poster. In both of your examples, we have the name on the front of the poster. Um, the bio information, the other, well, I'm going to jump over to four real quick because uh, you must include a subheader, a tagline that supports in some way, and be assured to look at the examples for that. But that needs to appear on the front. So there has to be some sort of a, a tagline or subhead on the front of the poster. Neither of your examples have that, so those will need to be included in your final presentation. Uh, you must include a timeline in your design that breaks down uh, the, the uh, laureate's achievements. So I, I'm not real sure if this, these are timeline um, indications right here where you're going in this circular in this kind of uh, uh, electron orbit and then here in this kind of circular um, i'm not real sure if those are timeline events but the other thing that's required to be on the back of this of the uh, poster is um uh b -b -b bio information so you need to compile by uh, paragraphs of bio information included on the back and i think the backs of these are problematic because how are you going to compile your bio information paragraphs in, in this, in these, they're, they're not depicted in your sketches. Okay. So we need to address that as well. Okay. Um, photographic imagery. We need to include photographic imagery. So in your presentation, you need to include, um, uh, their name, the biography paragraphs, a photo, the dates and events of your timeline. Okay, so so we need those things to be in place. As far as the photo and photographic use goes, it's only for the bio image, and that needs to appear on the back of the poster. The poster is two-sided, to 11 by 17 or 17 by 11. Your poster, your sketches are formatted in a square format. I highly recommend that you format your sketches in the format as close as possible to the depiction, to the a destination size. So you would want to format your sketches 11 by 17 or 17 by, uh, by 11 and, and represent that in your sketches. Okay, this is going to assist you in establishing spatial relationships and, and to determine how you can um, sorry about that, how you can um, um, I lost my train of thought um, so you can determine spatial relationships and determine how typography is going to relate to the actual size of the uh, required picture plane. Okay. Um, oh, you do have your bio image. Okay, that's great. Okay, so what we have here is you've got this kind of bullet list. And so right now it's, and you've got some years in here too. So I'm not real sure if this is 
uh, is each one of these has a year, but I'm confused. I don't know if this is timeline information here or if it's bio information. If it's bio information, then we're missing the timeline information and you would need to include that. If this is the timeline information, then we're missing the bio paragraphs and you would have to include that. So we're required to include both in this first presentation um, or, or, or the first week um, uh, preliminary work on the project. Okay, so, all right, so that's what we need to do. So, so, so go through the video and, and, and determine where you've fallen short in terms of the instructions for the poster and also the milestones, what's due during week five. Okay, at this point, what I would recommend is this. Now, you, you're doing some good things in the sketches, and you're smart, and you're, 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 you're developing this visual correspondence, connecting concept to um, typography and, and visual meaning in the front and the back of the poster, and you're also continuing what you've started on the front of the poster to the back of the poster. That's all good stuff. Okay. But as I said, problematic because we don't have, apparently, uh, uh, don't have the bio information here or here. As, as an, uh, that's saying that I'm reading these as timeline, as a timeline entries. Okay. I think it's a really good idea to take a look at the examples. Now, if you've taken a look, there's a couple of areas I want you to, to really draw your attention to in the class. Okay. The first one is this. A week five presentation, science symbols and semiotics. It's a really good presentation, and you really learn a lot here, especially when you get down here. And this little graphic right here has got several examples in it, and each of the examples represents some of uh, one of these techniques here: simultaneity, um, uh, visual transformation, substitution, exaggeration, and visual correspondence. So this visual correspondence, I kind of use that as an all-encompassing term to mean one of these techniques and basically creating meaning based on your concept and your subject as it relates to typography, as we are creating meaning for the front cover based on typo typography. So um, let's see. Okay, so go through that, study these things, and understand how the terms of, uh, associate with the, the uh, specific examples. And I really want you to think about how you can employ some of these techniques in your work. Another area of the class I'd like to draw your attention is these. This is the announcement for Welcome to Week 5. And here, again, are some wonderful examples of this visual correspondence we speak of, typographic solutions, presenting um, ideas and um, thoughts in, in purely typographic, uh, creating very, very heavy meaning. Okay, so go through those, and then at the bottom of the page, I've got these examples from previous student work for this assignment, which are really, to a, to a very high degree, I show this kind of visual correspondence that we talk about. This is a illustration, sure, but it's used typographically. Okay, so the, the front of the poster is creating meaning in, the, uh, in a typographic way, and I mention that because back here in the first um, um, instruction, it is that... <clears throat> excuse me, um, typographic design. So, so you're, you're basically, you're, create, you're, you're creating meaning and announcing the laureate typographically. Okay, so then we see that this wonderful continuation as this is kind of carried through to the back of the poster where the, the timeline is assembled. This one's interesting in that um, this this interesting pattern is created in the typography on the first on the front cover, and then it's repeated on the back cover. Then we kind of realize, okay, wait a second, that's a pattern out of our image. So we can see these heavy ties between pattern, a uh, presentation. I'm sorry, between image, um, uh, concept, and presentation. And then this last one is a great example of of, of this this wonderful technique where this designer. Uh, substituted a equal sign for the E, uh, which is perfectly legible as a E, but creates intense meaning and and connect makes a connection between Martin Luther King and equality. And then it, it, this designer has taken this a step further and created a timeline based on that equal sign. So you can see some really great examples there. So I really want you to study up on on uh, the course lecture material, the examples and the announcement and the requirements 
of the assignment and then go ahead and recompile your presentation using the recommendations that I have uh, presented in this video and then prepare that for your final submission on, on Sunday. If you have any questions at all, please let me know quickly because I'd like to make as many clarifications as quickly as possible so we can concentrate on moving forward in the project. And um, and I, I think, and I'm mentioning this to a lot of students, is, is take a minute, sit back, let this settle in, okay? Look through those presentations, study up, and, and really, really start thinking about how you can apply some of these techniques to your own work, then start putting your presentation together. All right. Very good. And again, really, um, uh, really important that you get with me if you have any questions at all. All right. Great job. Thank you very much.